Welcome back to my Roblox beginner scripting tutorial series. My name is Braldev, and this is the final episode of our beginner scripting tutorial guide. And if you've made it this far into the series, then huge respects to you, because I think a lot of people would have left by like the second or third episode. So the fact that you've made it this far means that you're really interested in being able to make a Roblox game and you're fully committed to making that happen, which I'm really proud of. So basically what we're going to be doing for this episode is we're going to be taking everything we've learned up until this point and we're going to create our first game as I'm going to show you right over here. This is essentially going to be taking everything we've learned and we're going to create our first game by doing so. So I'm just going to show you what this game is if we hit play when we go to test. And basically what we have here is an obstacle course. Now this obstacle course is a little unique compared to a traditional obstacle course or obby or whatever you want to call it. So first things first is we have these yellow balls over here where if we touch it, then it's going to increment our leader stat that we have up here called coins. And it's going to be a random number from like, I think one to five, where if we step on it, then it's going to change our coins value to something between one and five. And it's going to add that to our leader stat. And it's also going to make it transparent as well, just like this. But the main thing about this obstacle course is we have a button for each stage for this obstacle course. So if we step on it, then the gate at the end of it is going to open. And there's going to be a timer at the output showing how many seconds we have left before we make it across. So once we do make it across, then it's going to close the gate. And if you didn't make it in time, then you would have to go down and press the button again. So this is stage two, which is basically the exact same thing, except we have a smaller time frame. So as you saw right there, I barely had enough time to actually get through that thing. And so we basically just continue from here on out. Every single stage we make is basically the same idea where we press a button and then there's a certain amount of time that is going to pass before the gate closes on the other side. And so and taking everything we've learned, we're going to recreate this obstacle course. But I highly, highly encourage you to try making this game yourself first with everything you've learned before we start implementing it inside of this episode. So with that being said, if you've attempted to make this game by yourself, then we can go ahead and go straight into implementing. So I've loaded up a fresh base plate here and it's completely up to you whether you want to create a new place by going to file and then hitting new for this episode or you could just use the same game that you've been using throughout this entire tutorial guide. It's completely up to you. And one more thing I would like to mention is if there's at any point throughout the video where I'm speaking too fast or if there's some parts of the video that just confuses you, then I encourage you to rewatch those bits and you can even play the video in 0.75 times speed to make the video slower so that you can take in the information better. But once again, that's up to you. And now that I've addressed that, let's go ahead and create our first game on Roblox. So what we're going to do is go to the Explorer, hit the plus sign next to workspace, and we're going to insert a model. Now with this model, we're going to rename this model to our main game, just like this. And then we're going to add folders to this main game. And there's four of them that we're going to need. So let's hit the plus sign, insert a folder just like this. And we're going to rename this folder to coins. So we're going to need one for coins. And what I'm going to do is right click and duplicate this because we're also going to need one for the gates. And we're going to duplicate this again. We're going to need one for our buttons. And then finally, we're going to need one more for the stages themselves. So now that we have our folders, the next thing we're going to do is create all the parts that we need to make up one stage. And those three being the gate, the button and the obstacle course itself. So let's go and go into the home and we're going to insert a part. So this part is going to resemble the button that we're going to be using for the first obstacle. So what I'm going to do is rename this part to let's say stage one, and I'm going to go down and I'm going to hit anchored so that it's not affected by gravity whenever we step on it. And then we're also going to change the brick color of this to like really red. And we can change the material of this to neon as well. And I'm also going to scale this down by clicking on the scale tool. And we're going to just scale this down like so. So now we have our stage one button that we have over here. And we can place this inside of our buttons folder just like so. Okay, so that's the first part. But the next thing we need is our gate. So we're going to add another part like this. And we're going to call this one stage one as well. We're going to make this gate, let's say, some sort of green color like this. And we're also going to go down and check anchored once again. And we can just basically scale this up just like this so that it resembles a gate. And now we can drag this into our gates folder just like so. So now we have the button and the gate for stage one. But now let's create the actual obstacle for stage one. 
So what I'm going to do once again is insert a part just like this. We can scale this however we want, just like so. It doesn't really matter too much. And so now that we have this, we're going to go down and we're going to hit anchored once again. And what I'm going to do for each stage is I'm actually going to insert a model. So inside of the stages folder, we're going to hit the plus sign and we're going to insert a model. And I'm going to call this stage one again. And I'm going to drag this part inside of stage one. And now that we have this, I'm going to duplicate this part and I'm going to move it along this way, just like so, just so that we have some platforms over here. I'm going to duplicate the same thing just by going like this. I can even take these three parts and just duplicate it like so. And so we now have more to work with like this. And now that we have this, we have our first obstacle pretty much. So what we're going to do is basically take this part and we're going to duplicate it like this. And I'm also going to scale it just like so, so that we have a platform over here. And I'm just gonna recolor this bit to some sort of blue. And now that we have this, we could basically take our gate. So if we select the gate on the Explorer and we select the move tool, then we can basically just move it up here like this. If we're able to just move it over here and we cover it up so that we can't bypass it like this, then that should basically be everything that we need. And we're also going to take our button and we're just going to move it over here so that it's at a reasonable spot. And now we basically have our setup for the first stage. So now that we have this, we're going to create a script and make the game functional. So what I'm going to do is actually go on server script service and I'm going to hit the plus sign and we're going to insert one in server script service. We're not going to do it inside of workspace, but we're going to do it inside of here instead. So I'm just going to delete the script that's over inside of here and we're going to create a couple of variables. So the first thing is accessing the main game. So we're going to say local main game equals game dot workspace. And we're going to use wait for child as well. So we're going to hit colon wait for child open close parentheses. And then inside of here, we're going to say main game just like this. And then we're going to create more references specifically for the gates and the buttons. So what I'm going to do is say local gates equals main game colon wait for child open and close parentheses. And then in here, we're going to put gates and then we're going to have one for the buttons as well. So we're going to say local buttons equals main game colon wait for child open and close parentheses. And then we're going to put down buttons just like so. Okay. Now we have our gates and we have our buttons, but the thing we want to do with the script is we want to make this functional when we step on the button so that it can find the right gate that it's looking for so that it can open up the gate, so to speak. So what we need to do is basically access all of the buttons and then make them quote unquote pressable or touchable by the player. Um, one thing I forgot to do is go to our script and we're actually going to rename this to our main script, just like this, um, just for organization purposes. That's what we're going to do. So here's basically how we get a table full of all the buttons so that we can go through each of them so we can make them functional. What we're going to do is say for index comma button in pairs, open and close parentheses, buttons, colon, get children, open and close parentheses, do and then we're going to hit enter. So basically we're going to use get children to get a table of all of the buttons that are inside of this buttons folder. And then we're going to use this button variable to make a touched event for each and every single one of them. Now for this index variable, we can actually just put an underscore because we're actually not going to use this key variable right here. So what we're going to do now is say button dot touch colon connect function open close parentheses, enter. And we're also going to pass in the other part that we're trying to detect. And what we need is to check whether a humanoid touched it or not. So we're gonna say local humanoid equals other part dot parent colon find first child open close parentheses. And we're gonna look for a humanoid. Then we're gonna hit enter. And now what we're going to do is say if humanoid, then, and then we're going to hit enter just like this. Now there's something we need to add to the button that I forgot to mention. And those are some instance variables that we're going to be using and changing inside of a script. So inside of our stage one button, we're going to hit the plus sign and we're going to insert two values. The first one is going to be a Boolean, which is going to check whether this current button has been touched. So we're just going to rename this to touch just like this. And we're going to insert another value that's an int value just like this. And we're going to rename this to duration, which is going to be how long this gate is going to be open for. So we can say that this gate can be open for about 10 seconds. We're just going to change it to that. And we can leave the touched variable unchanged. 
And so what we're gonna do is basically locate our touch variable that we have here. So we're gonna say local touched equals button colon find first child, open close parentheses, touch just like this. So now what we're gonna do is say if humanoid and touched and touched dot value is equal to false. Now the reason we're saying touched here is because we're trying to see if touched actually exists as a value. And then we're going to check if the value of touched, so this thing down here, if it's set equal to false, so it hasn't been touched yet. So if we're able to confirm all these things, then we can make the button pressable. So what we're gonna do is we can actually create a new function and just put that inside of here. So what I'm gonna do is declare a new function up here by saying local function activate button, just like this. And then we're gonna put an open close parentheses and then we're gonna hit enter. So now we can pass in our activate button function down here. And there's actually a few things that we're going to pass in. So the first thing is going to be the button. And then the second thing is going to be the touched variable as well. So we're gonna put in touch just like this. So then we're gonna do the same thing up here by passing in button as a parameter. And then we're going to pass in the touched um, instance value as well. So now what we're going to do inside of this function is say touched.value is equal to true. And then we're gonna locate the duration value as well. So what we're gonna do is say local duration equals button colon find first child, open and close parentheses, duration, just like this. And then we are now going to put a task.wait for however long the duration's value is. So we're gonna say duration.value just like this. And then we are going to say touch value is set back equal to false, just like so. So we now have a button that activates, but now what we need to do is actually make the gate associated with this stage to be, I guess, open. So here's how we're gonna do it. What we're going to do is basically locate the gate that we're looking for, and then we're gonna open it up. And the way we're gonna do that is we're going to say local gate equals gate colon find first child, open and close parentheses, and what we're going to, oh, sorry, gates, that's what I meant to say. And then inside of here, what we're going to do is say button.name. And the reason we're doing button.name is because when we're looking for the stage one button, this is the name of the button. And if we go inside of the gates folder, we're trying to look for the same exact name so that we know that this is the stage gate that we're trying to look for. That's why we passed in button.name instead of looking for the specific name that we're looking for. So then once we find the gate, we're gonna say if gate then, we're going to set the transparency of the gate. So gate.transparency is set equal to 0.5. And then we're also going to make the gates can collide uh, set equal to false. So basically what can collide is, if we select gate, there's a property here called can collide. And when this is set equal to true, that means whenever our player is touching the part, then we can't pass through it. But if we set it equal to false, then that means the player can actually pass through the part. So that's what we're gonna be doing here by saying gate dot can collide is set equal to false, just like this. And so this is how we basically open up the gate for the player to be able to walk through it. Now, after a certain period of time, we're gonna have to basically take these variables and make the gate back to what it used to be. So we're going to select these two lines, we're gonna copy it, and then we're gonna paste it down here. So I'm gonna make the transparency zero, and I'm going to set the can collide of this property back to true, so that we now have a functioning script over here. Now, if we want to be able to print this out inside of the output, what we can do instead of a task.wait is write a for loop. Now, what we can do here is basically say local timer equals duration.value just like this. And what we can do is write a while loop by saying while timer is greater than zero, we can say do timer equals timer minus one. And then up here, we can say task.wait for about one second. And then we can even write a print statement at the very start here by basically telling us what the timer value currently is. So we print the timer, wait for one second, and then we decrement the timer variable by one until it reaches one or something that's not zero. So this is basically our entire main script right here. So if we go into the game and hit test and hit play, then we should basically see our first stage be functional. So if I press the button, then it's going to show down here that we have 10 seconds so that we can reach this stage and we are now reaching the other side of this gate. And then once the timer has finished, then it's basically gonna close up again so you have to go back and press the same button again. So if we go back and press the button one more time, then it should be working just as expected. So now what I'm gonna do is hit stop. And the next thing we're going to add is coins. So basically we're just gonna go inside of model, we're going to, instead of creating a part, we're going to hit the drop down here and we're gonna create a sphere. 
So what we're going to do with the sphere is we're going to rename this to coin. We're going to set the brick color to some sort of yellow, and we're going to make the material to neon. And we're also going to set anchored equal to true. And we're also going to set can collide equal to false, just like this. So the, the player can walk through it. And so now that we have this, we can basically just move this inside of our platform. I'm just going to put it somewhere here. I'm, I'm going to put it right here. So now that we have this, what we need to do is create a new script for our leader stats. So inside of service script service, we're going to hit the plus sign. We're going to insert a new script and we're going to rename this one to player stats, just like this. And now what we're going to do is create a player added event. So we're going to say game.players.playerAdded colon connect function open and close parentheses. We're going to pass in the player argument and then we're going to hit enter just like this. So we're going to create a new leader stat for this player. So we're going to say local leader stats equals instance dot new open and close parentheses folder. And then we're going to set the name of this folder. So we're going to say leader stats dot name equals in all lowercase. We're going to say leader stats like so. And then we're going to set the parent of this leader stats folder to the player itself. And now we're going to add a coins leader stat to this leader stats folder. So we're going to say local coins equals instance dot new. And then inside of here, we're, go we're going to add an int value. And then for the coins name, we're going to say coins dot name is equal to coins just like this. And then we're going to say coins dot value is set equal to zero. And then finally, we're going to put the parent of this coins value to the leader stats just like this. So now we've created our leader stats script right here. What we need to do now is basically take all the coins that are inside of this coins folder. So what I'm actually going to do is take this coin and move it inside the coins folder. So what I'm going to do is basically locate the coins that we're going to need for this script. So what, we're, what I'm going to do is say local main game equals game dot workspace colon wait for child open close parentheses main game. And then we're going to locate the coins folder by saying local coins equals main game colon wait for child. And then we're going to say coins just like this. Now we're gonna use another pairs loop for every single coin that we touch. So we're gonna to say for underscore comma coin in pairs in parentheses, we're gonna say coins colon get children because we're trying to get a table of all the coins rather than the folder itself. So then we're gonna say do just like this. And then we're going to add a touched event to the coin. So we're gonna say coin dot touched colon connect function, open close parentheses, enter just like this. And then we're also going to insert the other part as well. Now, one other thing we're going to add to this coins variable is by adding another Boolean value inside of our coin. And then we're going to rename this to touch just like so. So what we're going to do first is locate the humanoid once again. So we're going to say local humanoid equals other part dot parent colon find first child open close parentheses and then we're going to add a humanoid just like this next thing we're going to do is we have to locate the player of this humanoid because we need to be able to change the coins value of the player based on the humanoid that we provided and there's actually a function inside of players that allows us to do this so i want you to copy exactly what i do so what we're going to do is say local player equals game dot players colon and this function is going to be called get player from character just like this. And then inside of these parentheses, what we're going to do is say other part dot parent because we are passing in the character and we're trying to see if there's a player object that exists within the character, if that makes sense. So then what we're going to do is locate the touched variable by saying local touch equals coin colon find first child open close parentheses touch just like so. And now we're going to do our if statement. So we're going to say if humanoid and player and touched and touched dot value is equal to false then. So we need to make all four of these checks. And if every single check here is valid, then what we're going to do first is say touched dot value is set equal to true. And then what we're going to do is say player dot leader stats dot coins dot value is equal to the same thing here. So if we just copy this and paste it on the right side, plus one. So basically what we're doing here is we take the player, 
we get the leader stats folder of the player, then we get the coins stat, then we update the value of it to whatever it currently is, and then we set it equal to one. Now, if we want to make this more readable, what we can do is basically just delete this and then say plus equals one. So it takes whatever the value of this is and it adds one to it just by using this simple compound operator, just like so. So once we add the value to this, what we can do is we can visually change the coin itself by saying coin dot transparency. Let's say we set this equal to 0.75. And now we basically have a finished game. If we go into the game and hit play, then what we should see is if we step on the button, then it's still gonna be visible. And if we hit on this coin, then it says that it adds one to our coins. But there's one final touch that we need to add to this, and that is adding a random coins amount when we step on the button. So what we can actually do down here is say local random amount equals math.random, open and close parentheses, and then we're going to have a range of one to five just like this. And so once we do this, we're actually going to replace the one with the random amount just like this. So now if we go into the game and hit play, then it should give us a random amount when we step on this uh, coin. So we step on it and it gave us four coins instead of one. And if we step on this one again, then it's going to give us another random amount from one to five. So we've now finished our very first game. Like if you were able to catch up with me throughout this entire episode, then good on you for that. But one more thing that we can do is add another stage. And how we're going to do that is we're basically going to create a, another model by saying model over here. We're going to make stage two, just like so. And then we can basically just take our part that was over here. We can duplicate it and then move it alongside this way. We can drag this inside of stage two, and then we can add like a little obstacle course here by just duplicating and then moving it to the right side here, duplicating, move to the right side here. We can even take all three of these parts, duplicate it, and then move it alongside here again until we reach the other side. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this part that we have down here, just move it alongside this way. And we're also going to take this gate, we're gonna duplicate it, we're gonna rename this to stage two, and then we're gonna move it this way. Uh, so once we do that, then we can also take the button down here. So we're going to duplicate it and then move it up here. So we're going to move it up here just like this so that we have a button to press for the next gate. And I'm also going to rename this to stage two, just like so. And that is how you add more stages to this obstacle course that we just created. So if we go into the game and we press the button, then we should be able to go into the next stage. And if we press this button, then it's gonna open up the next gate that we're trying to look for. And so this is our final product. We can also duplicate this coin by moving it this way. We can even duplicate it again by moving it up here. And we can finally do it one more time just by moving it down here. And now we have a final game. If you were able to recreate this game while following along with this tutorial guide, then you should be proud of yourself. Like you, you were able to create your first game on Roblox with everything that you were able to learn from this entire tutorial guide. And this is definitely going to help you for when you go to the advanced scripting tutorial guide and even the GUI tutorial guide as well. And this is a long journey. Like I said, becoming a Roblox game developer is not easy. And if you were able to make your first game just by following this tutorial guide, then you're definitely ready for whatever else that there is going to be for you with the future episodes that you're gonna be watching with the advanced scripting tutorial guide and also the GUI tutorial guide. So. That is basically the entire beginner scripting tutorial guide. If you found this to be extremely helpful, then leaving a like on this video and also making a comment on like everything that you were able to do inside of this tutorial guide would definitely be very helpful. And I would love to see what you have to say about this tutorial guide. If there's anyone who you know would like to make Roblox games, then I encourage you to recommend them this tutorial guide as well for them to watch. And now that we've made it this far, I would like to say congratulations. This has been an extremely fun journey and I would love to see what else that you'll be able to make beyond this point. But with that being said, that's basically gonna conclude this tutorial guide. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video. Take care.